Good morning, Shirley, the herb lady. And we're going to talk about aloe vera. Uh, it's been around for a long, long time. In fact, the study I studied, 1500 BC, so that's a long time. Um, many homes have potted aloe vera, and some people just look at it, but it really needs to use it for burns and things like that. It really, really helps. Um, this guy, I was reading this one article where this guy for 15 years had chronic ulcers on his legs and they had tried all the chemical stuff and it did, they just kept on coming back. But when they started using aloe vera, it only took 10 days dried up. Because aloe vera, what it does, not only does it soak into the skin really good, but it goes deep into the skin, which is excellent. It helps to heal, it's soothing and it heals. And it also helps x-ray burns. And it, the ulcer, it, it shrunk, and then it's got new skin underneath, and that's what helps, it makes it grow. There was one lady that sells herbs like I do down in the lower 48, and she sells more than the whole company sells in one month. That's how much she sells. I mean, she's the number one seller of aloe vera, because she won't let people walk out of her shop without her giving her testimony how she's healed stomachs, legs, I mean, you name it, she's held with aloe vera because we have ours tested and most time there's only two aloe veras that's original. Most of it's got a lot of water in it, but this, this doesn't. And this is potent. You only take like an ounce of it and it really helps a lot. Alexander the Great, he conquered this island that was loaded with aloe vera just for his wounded soldiers because he knew it would help them. Uh, Marco Polo, uh, said in China they use it for stomach ulcers and for stomach um, and for rashes. Now Egyptians is the one that used most of it and they used it in 15 BC, 1500 BC uh, for wounds, stomach pain, digestive disorders, headaches, itching, baldness, mouth and gum disease, kidney, blisters, sunburn, uh, when I was a kid, I took swimming lessons, and I, after swimming lessons, I came home and fell asleep. And it was kind of in a shaded area. It was in the backyard. I thought it was fine, but the sun came around, and when I woke up, I had a sunburn. And she took, Mom took me to the doctor, and, and he said it was second, almost third degree burn. I had a blister on my back that big, and when it busted, it ran all the way down my leg. But she took, put aloe vera on it, and I don't have no scar tissue, no nothing like that. So um, I'm so glad that my mom knew about aloe vera even back when I was a child. I think I was like 10 years old. Uh, the juice used by the Egyptian, uh, they used it for embalming. Columbus and his logs and his ship logs said that he got aloe vera for, the, for his sailors. And um, during the atom bomb and the x-rays, aloe vera wasn't being used very much and then when we had the atom bomb and the x-rays uh, was invented and there was burning people and aloe vera came back and they started using aloe vera to heal the burns that they did with the bombing and everything. Aloe vera is mostly for burns. Doctors in the University of Washington uh, says that it decreases itching, peeling, and helps with pain. Aloe vera stops and relieves the burning process because he when you get burnt, it just keeps going deeper and deeper, but this stops it and stops doing the new skin uh, and regenerates the skin tissue. Uh, and it just helps to heal it a lot faster. Uh, the gel helps to heal the x-ray and cancer radiation. I've had people that they be scarred from head to toe when they're with radiation for cancer. And so um, gel is one of the main things you can put on it. External herbs is good for scrapes, cuts, and it has calcium in it that reduces the bleeding when you have something like that. Uh, aloe vera penetrates the skin quickly and deeply, and that's why it can heal. It allows the water and the moisturizer to sink deep into the skin and restores the lost fluid, uh, replacing the fatty layer underneath the skin. Aloe vera sloughs off the dead skin and helps the, the new one to grow. Um, the, it has an antiseptic that stops the skin from infection and clogging up the pores. 
the absorption of uh, aluminum, a lot of the stuff that out in the market that has aloe vera has aluminum in it, and aluminum uh, is bad for your health. And so uh, for people, and aloe vera works as an excellent deodorant if you get this organic and not the one with the aluminum in it. A piece of the plant held in your mouth and allowed to release the juice clears your throat for singing and for speaking. It reduces the itching, the burning of poison ivory, and it re removes warts if you keep using it over and over again. The dry powder is very powerful. I've had one guy, nothing could move his bowels, and he used to buy aloe vera for me every month, and it was in the powder form. And he said that's the only thing that moves his bowels. Um, it, they said it's stronger than Cascara Sagrada and uh, Senna. And Senna, they said, this one herbalist I said under in Fairbanks, he said, you can have a dead mouse and put Senna on its uh, back part and uh, it would have a bowel movement. So uh, when aloe vera is stronger than that as a powder, you know it can move anything. Uh, it helps to expel worms and it activates your digestive system. It's excellent, it's excellent for douching and for discharge problems. Uh, some women have taken it to bring on suppressed administration. Aloe vera helps maintain good blood vessels and it tones and circulates. It has the potassium in it, the plant to help with the heart rhythm and stimulates the kidney to dispose the uh, body's waste material. That's what your kidneys is. That's why we're supposed to drink lots of water so we can dispose the, the body waste. Aloe vera has been used for chronic nose congestion. People treated with aloe vera was able to breathe and smell easier and decrease the nasal secretion. Um, it helps with anemia, bad wetting. It relieves um, arthritis. It replaces hair loss and liver spots. Now we're gonna talk about an apple. And a lot of people don't think an apple is a herb, but it is. And there's over 2,000 different kinds of apples. And the main thing about an apple is it can be used for medicine or for food. And that's what nature gave it to us. To eat an apple on going to bed will make the doctor beg for his bread. But the one we really found when we was kids, apple a day keeps the doctor away. And so this, uh, they have used apples over and over again. Apples have been proven it's an antibiotic that kills certain bacteria. Apples contain pectin that helps to remove heavy metal, such as mercury and lead and copper and arsenic. Um, the pectin also reduces uh, blood cholesterol by binding the acid and decrease the absorption of cholesterol and the fat in the small intestine. People with sugar problems and hypoglycemic, if they eat an apple, it will help them to, um, it, it, cur it curbs their not wanting sugar. A lot of people want sugar, and if they eat an apple, it has everything in there to uh, help the person to balance the body. Research in Yale found that the smell of spice apples, and I love uh, pumpkin spice. I sprinkle my uh, over my apples and I cook them, because see, a lot of times we get apples that's green up here, when you have green apples and you eat them, you have a stomachache because they're not ripe. You have to wait to know if the apple is ripe, it will fall from the tree. And a lot, of, a lot of times they pick the apple when it's green. So what I do is if I don't ripen them, I slice them up and put pumpkin spice on them and then steam them. And, oh, they just melt in your mouth. And I keep, you know, bowls in the refrigerator. And when I get hungry in the evening, that's my supper I have with walnuts over the top of it. Apples contain malic and acid, which neutralize the acid body and helps with digestion. The sugar in a ripe aloe is pre-digested and passed into the blood quickly. Uh, apples are one of the most easily digest if it, has, if it already has fallen from the tree. Dr. Shirks uh, points out that the acid in the salt of the apple is most concentrated next to the skin, so don't peel your apple. When you peel your apple, you lose a lot of the vitamins and minerals in it. And always get an organic apple. Uh, if you don't get an organic one, they spray about 36 different wax and chemicals in there to keep them, so we can eat them and they look pretty all the time. 
but they're not healthy because they got all the chemicals. So try to get organic. It said that countries where the unsweetened cider is, they don't ever have kidney stones. If your children want some bed night snack, give them an apple. Um, it just soothes them and then they will go to sleep. Dr. Jervis said apple cider vinegar helps animals and humans to conceive by providing the body with acid alkaline balance of potassium. Potassium will allow the body to kill bacteria and train uh, train their cells to be healthy. Dr. Shirks also have apples to help with acne and boils, uh, tumors, eczema, psoriasis, swollen glands, and sore throat. Dried apples has a lot of iron in it. The Chinese use them for parasites, gas, and sleepiness, nuts, and fever. Remember, when an apple falls from the tree, it has the enzyme and you can digest it. But if you pick it, wait until it ripes, the enzyme is not mature. Eat an apple today. The next one we're going to talk about is blue vervain. Consider one of the cure-all for the plague. Blue vervain, most people don't know about it. It's good for your bladder. It helps your liver. It's good for eye pain and dimness of sight. Uh, blue vervain will break a fever and cure colds overnight. Uh, it's highly re recommended for epilepsy, fits, or anything that has spasmodic to the nervous system. Blue vervain relieves nervousness, sleep sleepiness, uh, emotional disorders stemming from the nervous upset. It improves circulation and restores blood pressure. It literally tones and it's really good to give it to a child when they're younger and they will get healthy as they grow up. And it also stimulates their appetite. If you got a child that won't eat, you start giving them blue vervain and they will eat because it works with their uh, stomach. And it will pull out boils and blue vervain helps to expel mu mucus, coughs, asthma, pneumonia, and whooping cough. Um, it helps with wheezing. The next one and the last one we're going to talk about is burdock. Burdock peels, chop, and cook at low heat uh, is a green vegetable that tastes mostly like asparagus. Dr. Christopher, when he was in the army at Fort Lewis, one of the men came in with boils all over his throat. And so he lanced them and they came back and he lanced them and they came back. So then he, he wrote a prescription to the meth sergeant and he says, eliminate fried foods, milk, meat, and sugar, and only serve him fresh vegetables and fruit. And guess what? They started drying up and going away, and he kept on giving him burdock tea, and they never came back. And he had had them all his life. Uh, most children learn about burdock when we get our burrs. I used to, our next door neighbor used to have lambs over there, and we used to go over there and run through the field, and we come back, and we had a little short dog named Brownie and she had burrs on her and we had burrs on our socks and everything like that. And I never did know that with burdock, but the burrs is, uh, after they dry up, it's, it's called burdock. And that's how it's got its name. And the seeds are really good to break up the stones. Burdock is any kind of skin disease, burdock helps. And it's used for, for any kind of disorder on skin. Burdock helps to clean the blood, it promotes healthy skin, in case of swollen glands, apply a burdock to it. What you do is make the tea, get a cotton sock and soak it down in there and put your foot in the cotton sock and do it like five days a week or six days a week and keep doing it till the swelling goes down and it literally purifies your blood while you're putting that uh, cotton sock on dipped in the tea. Um, it cleanses the blood, it tones the body, and you need to use it over a, a long time. Just don't do it just for a week, keep doing it. How do you use the herb is you keep doing it till you see results. A lot of people would want to do it a month, they go, well, your brand new cells come in every four months. If, some, if you got unhealthy cells, it's every 90 days. And if you got healthy cells, it's 120 days. So you still got the old dirty cells. So if you don't try things for at least 90 to 120 days, you're not gonna see the results. And if you do, you, we see great results. Um, in the Russian, they use it for hair falling out. Uh, it, eliminate, it stimulates hair growth, but they said it takes about six to eight months to notice a change, but they had they get this real nice hair. And any cleanse which detox, you want toxin condition, 
can help use burdock tea. See something that's swelling up or inflamed, just stop drinking the tea and it will stop cleaning it up. And something I was taught many years ago, when you have ivy, poison ivy, or when you have uh, oak, uh, poison oak, always look 20 feet away from where the poison herb is. And there's always a good herb that neutralizes it, and that's how burdock grows. It, it, grow, it grows about 20 feet away from a poison herb, and you know that you, you've got something to neutralize it. In Japan, they use burdock root almost every day in their cooking because it helps them and helps them to keep healthy. Burdock is excellent use in the diet, uh, uh, being a diabetic and suffering from blood sugar-related disease. I hope you enjoyed these four. It really helps to use herbs every day and know about them and keep using them until you see results.